Okay, so first thing we've got to do is just loosen the lid on the brake fluid reservoir and then just surround it by a few absorbent cloths because we'll be pushing the pistons back into the calipers. So we want to make sure there's give in the system for that fluid to come back up. As you push the piston back in, obviously that fluid's got to go somewhere. So just leave it on top, just loose and the dust gets in. First thing we're going to do is actually going to loosen off this retaining that's just here. Skoda's recommended torque for this is four and a half newton meters. I don't anyone follows that. But. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of remove these dust caps, undo the pins, that are holding the caliper on, hang the caliper up off, off of the springs here, off, off a bit of rope I've got, although I recommend you use a, a clip to hang it. Get rid of these dust caps. Okay. You'll need a seven millimeter hex bit to get the pins out. They're not done too tight these, they're about 30, 40 Newton meters, so uh, not too bad to remove. And you can actually see them turning through here, it's quite useful sort of feedback there for when you're putting them in. If you're lucky you can pull them out, if not you'll have to wait till it's off the car. Okay, now they're loosened up, we're just going to have to push the piston back into the caliper slightly. To do that, you're just going to want to bear. It's quite, it's quite tough to get an angle, but if you get the screwdriver in just there, and that slot there, the other way around, because this is all going to be changed anyway, it doesn't matter, so you can just get the screwdriver in and just kind of push it back in that, that fashion. Obviously, you've already taken the top off the brake fluid reservoir, so that fluid will just be filling back up again. And that's plenty, that's nice and loose now, so we can now... Go ahead, get our rope ready. There we go. Now that we've got the caliper removed from the brake disc, we can go ahead and remove the pads. First, this outer one here, you just want to press down, it'll come half out, and then you can use long those pliers or a screwdriver or whatever to just pry out, we just put it out like that. I'm going to leave this one in because we're just going to use the um, G clamp here to wind that piston back into the caliper. Obviously a piston wind back so would be better if you have one. There it is, that's wound back. Now we can just push that out. And it comes. Okay, now the pads are out of the caliper, we can go ahead and clean up the caliper using a wire brush. Particularly the pad carrier here, you can see where the pads have been bearing on the metal there. So that's exceptionally important to get that clean. We'll put some grease on that later. using a T30 Torx bit to kind of undo this disc retaining nut here and I recommend you replace these just because that nut gets rounded off in any way it's internally it's a pick of a job to, to fix the problem so I recommend you just replace them each time. Now you'll find that when you do this the brake disc if, if it hasn't been installed responsibly it will be held on very very tight to the hub and I happen to know that this one was not installed responsibly because I've already done the other side so it's going to need a really hard whack or series of whacks with a hammer to break the seal between the disc and the, the hub rotor there. I recommend just hammering on this section here to give it the, the, the greatest effect obviously you're going to be replacing this doesn't matter what damage you do to it so there you go it took quite a few goes off it comes okay so now we can use a wire brush and clean up the hub so that this doesn't happen again. Bit of brake cleaner. There it gets nice and clean. So now we can put some ceramic paste on there ready for the new disc. Ceramic brake paste. Brilliant stuff. If you use copper grease here, it will tend to bond the hub to the disc so I recommend not using copper grease for this. Right time for the new disc. The new turning screw ready. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on this screw as well. Now Skoda recommend you do this up to a torque of four and a half newton meters. 
that's incredibly low torque now obviously the the wheel box won't really hold it on but it's still a very low torque so my torque wrench won't go down as low as that so just do it up reasonably tight right now the new disc is on we can go ahead and get the new pads in okay so i've got ebc green stuff pads here which are not only good for the environment but a really good compromise between performance and economy these will grip a lot better than the stock pads that you get from skoda the one thing i would note is that you can see the sensor on these is built into one of the pads now in fact you can see on the old one what happened there and it's actually been removed and the reason is that this car is not fitted with brake pad wear sensor facilities so that one's going to go ahead and cut that off in the same way the old one would have been and this one here with the the darker springs this one and the, the sort of the wide thick springs compared to these which are much more shallow springs so the one with the wide thick springs goes into the uh, piston when you offer it up you're going to find that the springs won't well are pushing too far out so i recommend using a pair of long nose pliers just to help encourage it there it is that's in nicely now you'll notice the top springs also pushing down quite a bit and when you come to fit the whole caliper back onto the carrier you'll probably need to push quite a bit against that spring against that upper spring there just a case of pushing down from here maybe yep pushing down from the top the last thing you want to do is just put a bit of ceramic brake grease on the, the pressure points here where the, the pads are going to be bearing okay so now we can go ahead and release the, the rope let's get the caliper over there it is now next point to note there is a bit of metal just here yeah that and that's the first thing you need to think about when you're putting this back in that needs to be located over here and then the whole thing leave it in there it goes just needs a bit of encouragement and a bit of playing around but there it goes so it's in the right place now so now we know we're good to go so like i said earlier you're going to find that the hole where the pin is going to go here it's not going to align up and you can see that thread is not lining up but if i push in now it starts to line up. So that's just that, that upper spring I was mentioning earlier. So make sure they're clean and then put some ceramic paste on them. And then they did need to clean it. A bit of ceramic paste. Okay, so put it in and as I say, it won't line up. Let me push it in a little bit. And you'll see it does line up nicely. Start to, yeah, we'll need a bit of, bit of a dance as usual, but we'll get it. There it goes, it's caught now quite nicely. Did the other one loosely, and we can tighten them up. torque for these caliper retaining pins is 30 newton meters so not massively tight in fact i've already done that by hand so i don't need to apply any more but yeah i need a bit more okay so they're good okay and a final step is just to replace the dust caps on the top of the pin holes there so there's the first one there's the second one it done okay and the very last step with these brake pads and this obviously is to just check the brake fluid reservoir replace the lid and remove the cloths so and no leakage there so it's all good and that's it okay so final thing to note is that once you've replaced your brake pads and indeed if you've done your brake discs as well you will need to depress the brake pedal several times just to get those pistons back out of the calipers and gripping the pads onto the discs so it's really important once you've got the car back on the ground everything else tightened up just pump the brake pedal a few times get that tension back in the brake system and you'll find when you pull away your brakes work as normal otherwise you'll pull away you'll put the brake on at the first normal natural point and you'll find they don't work and you have to really push them several times to get anywhere so it can be a, a hazard the other thing to note is do make sure that you take it easy with your driving for the first 50 miles first 60 70 kilometers or so because your brakes will need a little bit of time to bed in now those green stuff pads from ebc they actually have a coating on them that means you don't have to do that. But generally speaking, when you replace brake pads, it's good practice to just take it a bit easy, 
leave a little bit of a longer stopping distance and just allow those brakes to just wear in a little bit. Once they've worn in after about, about 50, 60 miles, 70, 60, 70, 80 kilometers, they'll be absolutely good to go. Hope that helps. See you in the next video.